up y'all kay ingram here with another episode of for your future now on today's show we are talking all about privacy and i called up an expert to get you a few tips on how you can protect it check it out what should folks know about privacy and why they should take it seriously well what we think is important is the, the general word we've heard about for a long time and we've Various news events have come up to let us know that we're giving away or it's being more data is being taken from us than we were aware of. And it, it sounds like a generic problem, but it really affects you in a bunch of very specific ways. Actually, the way we think about it, there's sort of personal risk and harm. You, know, you can get embarrassed because something you didn't want to be public you know, gets made public. Um, on a commercial sense, you get tracked with ads, which might mean not only that they're sort of following you around, but you can get prices that um, are different from other people. You might not get offers that someone else is getting. Um, so that is being controlled by what they think they know about you. Yeah. And you all and your company are doing such a great job at sounding the alarm and making folks realize that this is so important that there's now an app. So why should folks download this app? Why should it be, you know, another little toggle here on my phone? <laughs> right. Well, the issue with privacy has been that we've all learned that we're losing all this data. It's being taken from us or we're leaking it unintentionally, but no one has really known what to do about it. Uh, there really hasn't been a solution. And so what we set out to do uh, over two years ago was to make an easy way to start taking back control. So there's settings you can change. So we, we let you customize this. It's a very personal solution to what you know, risks you care about the most, how technically sophisticated you are and what your goals are. But then it sort of walks you through making these changes that can stop the amount of data that you're leaking. We just give away too much data because that's the default. So this is pretty cool. Like I'm looking at it in the app store right now and it looks kind of set up as though you're checking your credit score. Like it has, what's your what's your PRIP score? Yeah, we thought the score was really important because people don't know where they stand on privacy. They sort of have no context. And then they also don't know when they do something, how much progress they made. You know, we think of this whole thing like fitness or weight loss or something where there's a goal, you're, you're not gonna get there in 10 minutes. You have to just work at it slowly over time. Yeah, I'm like, I've been on a personal journey. 2020 has given me a lot of time this year to try and get all that stuff together. So I'm definitely interested. I'm like, how do I build up my privacy score? And I've got to be real, Craig. I have made so many different accounts where the password is like, oh, you know, it's good. It's medium. It could be stronger. Or maybe I'll get different ads, right? Like I'll be looking at a pair of shoes like this just happened the other day. And my mom, who's in, you know, the other room on a different computer, you know, she'll get an ad of what I was looking at. And so am I at a loss? Am I a lost cause, Craig? <laughs> like uh, You're about where everyone is. This is the problem is that the default has been no privacy. And Many of those things that you just cited, if you change some settings, if you add a tool on your side, you can make tremendous progress. It's, it's really an issue of people just haven't known what to do. Uh, it's all been hidden. You hear about the idea of they're listening all the time. I actually don't believe they're listening. Uh, I think it's worse than that they're listening. They don't even need to listen. Your mom's in the other room. Well, they know she's your mom. They know she's at your apartment or you know with you today. They know your interests that's enough for them to serve her that ad, right? They know you want something. It's your mom. They show her the ad. She might buy it for you. Oh, ooh, Craig. Ah. <laughs> so when it comes to the protest movement, um, which we've been seeing a lot of this summer, especially, you know, there have been conversations online of, you know, what you can do to make sure that either police or maybe some more, you know, nuisance, um, organizations, you know, aren't tracking you or aren't following you. Um, is that one thing to be concerned about? Like, is that a realistic concern um, that you've noticed or that is actually happening? And then two, if so, you know, what can some of these, you know, uh, protesters or folks who are taking to the streets and want to keep their information safe and don't want folks knocking down their door, you know, what can they do? Yeah, well, it's definitely a real issue. Um, if you've been to you know the protest here in New York, you know that it's not uncommon to suddenly have helicopters floating above the crowd. Um, those helicopters are, are most likely there to vacuum up all the cell phones that are below them. So the, the first thing you can do is turn your cell phone off, put it in airplane mode and turn the Wi-Fi off. 
Uh, you cannot bring it. There's pros and cons to that, obviously. But if it is on and connected to the networks, both the cell phone company knows where you are and the police can you know, request that data, either about you or they can request everyone that was in this area. And secondly, they use things called stingrays, which is probably what's in the helicopter, that pretend they're a cell phone tower. So your phone's looking for towers. The police device gets hit by your phone saying, are you a tower? And they now know that you were there. So the number one thing, if you're going to go to a protest and not have a lot of people, including the police, know you were there, and you might want to, you might be near something bad that happens, and they will come later and ask you about it, even if you weren't the perpetrator or didn't cause it. So it's, I would say you don't want them to know, you know, you don't want to be on these lists. The second thing about phones and, and protests is the, you know, police authorities can confiscate your phone. And with face ID and touch ID, they can open your phone. They can just point it at your face or they can make you touch it. But the courts have ruled that they can't make you tell them your password. So before you go to the protest, you want to turn off touch ID and face ID. Um, so that if they get your phone, they have to get your password and you want to not give that to them until a lawyer or a court you know, tells you to. So those two, I would say, are the most important two for people to know to try to stay off the wrong lists. Well, anything else that I may have missed or something else that you think folks should really know as it relates to privacy? Um, you know, the, the, the biggest quick fix for people really is to add a few tools. You mentioned passwords, as I say, a password manager and the two factor where you ask for a second code that makes an account like your Google account or your Apple account. Um, according to Google and Microsoft, it takes it up to like 99.7% sort of hacker, you know, prevents hacking at, at a really high level. So we think that's, you know, you might think it's a little inconvenient to have to constantly put those codes in, but enabling two factor first, having good passwords, and second, enabling two-factor really helps. And so I would, I guess, suggest people think about a few privacy tools in addition to changing the settings, uh, both things that we cover in the Priv app. Um, but most people don't have, haven't added enough tools. They got 100 apps on their phone. Yeah. Get two or three that help with privacy. Um, and, you know, PR double IV in the app store is the Priv app. It's free. So we'd certainly love people to go grab that. Very cool. Thank you again for making this so accessible. Like, again, I think that most people, when we think about how to adult and how to be a better adult, we think about our finances, you know, we think about um, any number of things, but privacy doesn't always come into the conversation. So this is really important. And...